Mr. Nominee. I also think, and I won't be surprised, that if you are successfully confirmed by the Senate, you may likely be reappointed and be deployed to your former ministry. In the event that that happens, I want to raise two questions and maybe clarifications from you, sir. You talked about the criteria used for the choice of projects for execution based on scarce resources. I know that that choice is also based on the critical in economic importance of these roads. I just want to know if a Leme Portacourt Road leading to Portacourt Refinery is not part of the roads that are considered very critical in your choice of roads to be executed in the country. Because this road, is a nominee, as you know, leads to the refinery, and you can imagine the number of trucks and vehicles that ply that road. It is perennially under deplorable condition, that road, as you know. And even as I speak to you, if you pass through that road, and I saw. Sometimes the state government also intervened. The nominee, I think it is important to know, you know, why that rule is not part of your consideration. The second one, still on road. You are also aware that the road leading from Kolo, uh, Yenezwe, Kolo, Nembe Road, passing through the first commercial oil well, oil field in this country. Lowry as is leading to name to brass. Brass is an export terminal of crude oil. And from 1974 till date, that road is under construction. I just want to also know why the choice of projects, particularly the road projects, that that road is not considered. I know you are a very strong man. You are committed, they focused person. You perform very well. But this particular road has not been given attention. That is on roads. Secondly, no, 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 no. It's on roads. No, no, no. This is second. This is, this is the second one. I should be protected now. Uh, distinguished uh, Senator Deji, you know we have set uh, some rules for ourselves and one of them is a maximum of two questions per person so that we allow others and i can tell you i have about 28 senators who want to ask questions so i will even advise that no preamble no introduction go straight to your question so that we're able to take as many senators as possible senator Ike Ikuramaru. Thank you, Mr. President, very distinguished colleagues. Mr. Nomini, I'll start by congratulating you on your renomination and also to thank you for your commitment to the development of not just Lagos, where we are governor, but also for our country as a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I just have two questions. You recall, Mr. Nomini, that I had a conversation with you when we were appointed last regarding the issue of private sector participation in the rural sector development. And uh, one of the challenges at the time, according to you, was the complex nature of the procurement process for that kind of arrangement. And you promised that you are going to find a way of simplifying it. But four years down the line, we ended up still uh, pursuing the issue of uh, appropriation as the sole um, item in the, the low sector development. Is this something you think that you can achieve as quickly as possible? Because as it is today, it's going most unlikely going to be difficult for us to achieve our maximum, maximum uh, uh, expectation in the sector by just yearly appropriation. So do you think that there's something we can do to 
fast track the process and get the private sector involved and be able so that they can be able to recover their money through a very transparent process. The second is in the energy sector. It appears to me that they are not making so much progress in that regard. And would you like to consider a situation where from bond from to the, the energy sector or segment it in such a way that states or zones we are able to have independent generation, transmission, and distribution, so that we are able to have some level of efficiency. Because the, the present the, um, national grid we have doesn't seem to be working. Because once we have a failure in one place, it affects every other place. Every other place. So now, just as large as, as it is, we would like to consider a situation where we will be able to segment our energy sector for ways of efficiency. Leader of the Senate. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, my distinguished colleagues. Uh, well, congratulations for your acceptance nomination. My question is that recently it appears all we learned that the federal government have concluded some arrangements, some agreements with Simons of Germany, you know, to participate, you know, in the power sector. Can you inform this Senate what kind of uh, agreement is it? At what point do you expect? this intervention to take place and do you expect secondly do you expect this intervention will not affect the kind of agreements that federal government entered with the private sector people in the uh, power value chain thank you very much uh, senator president my colleagues uh, the nominee, I have just one question, and uh, it's with regard to on grid uh, solar. Uh, as you are aware, over the last four years, uh, there have been a lot of. Uh, Babatunde Radifashala, there, uh, who was former governor of Lagos State, San, uh, he was also a politician, federal ministry, minister of power, works, and housing, was a past minister uh, holding those three important. Uh, sectors and he's answering questions now from the lawmakers. Some have asked him about unbundling the power sector to allow uh, states to generate their own power, uh, private sector having some investment on road projects and so on. More questions coming up for him. It's a live coverage of the ministerial screening. We'll go on a very short break when we come back. This live streaming continues just in a moment. Stay here with us and we'll be right back.
Welcome back, 99.3 Nigeria Info. It's the live coverage of the ministerial screening ongoing right now at the National Assembly in the Senate, especially screening the nominees, 43 of them. Baba Tunde uh, Raji Fashola is up right now uh, answering questions from the lawmakers uh, about, uh, I mean, the ministry held uh for the past four years that's right questions have been asked about road about power and so on and he's answering these questions right now so let's go back and hear what he has to say mindful and sensitive to some equitable distribution of what uh assets are and the colonia negra road suffers the same problem apart from community issues at the time when i visited there were some community issues that had delayed the project with regard to um PPPs. Um, let me just quickly say that, uh, as I said and, and, and acknowledged by distinguished Senator Kwemadu, PPPs are complex. They take time to negotiate. Even here in the federal government, you need to go through the ICRC, you need to advertise, you need to do. In a government that has four years to show results, and in a, in a country where there is very, very uh, uh, high expectation for results. Um, we must then be more skillful in how we use them. That said, let me also say that PPPs are not attractive for all projects. I have learned to distinguish between social projects like roads and commercial projects like airports, hospitals, and those kind of facilities where there is a daily cash count. And those are easier for private investors to want to put their money into the roads and the risk of construction that it requires. And so you will see that one of the things, and there are so many modes, one mode for, of course has been to take funding through special instruments like the Sukuk, that was a sort of PPP, to use policies like the Nigerian uh, uh, Tax Credit Initiative Policy which we are now using to build the uh, Apapa Ushoki Expressway, which Lafarge has also used to build the road in, uh, to their uh, uh, factory in Calabar, and a couple of others are showing interest. And I think at the time I left, there were about 28 roads on the short list for the committee set up to review and hopefully approve for implementation. I have, in response to your question, what do I suggest? I think there is some opportunity and I made this presentation during the last 2019 budget presentation that one of the ways I think is to expand instruments like the Sukuk. Maybe it won't be a Sukuk this time, but I think Nigeria can seek to leverage from the large pool of funds with ordinary people who are looking for secure investments. And some of them are not even in the banking sector, keeping their cash. And I propose them that we should consider something like a 10 trillion naira infrastructure bond, backed by uh, parliamentary uh, uh, support and secured by the federal government with a reasonable coupon issued in tranches each year we need to fund the infrastructure and broken up into even very small denominations that people can invest as much as only 1,000 naira. Those who want to invest a billion can do so and so on. And in my view, uh, if we don't try this, we won't know whether it has worked. But I am convinced that we can do something along this line based on the interest that I saw in the Sukuk. In a hundred billion Sukuk, for example, there were 186 or 286 investors. And the instrument was oversubscribed, which meant that there was an appetite. All right, uh, Baba Tunde Raji Fashola there still answering questions and is raising some uh, ideas as to how we could, you know, deal with infrastructure, uh, the past sector. But it's focusing right now on infrastructure. That's right. Uh, he's saying we could focus on raising more money from Sukuk, also raising about 10 trillion naira infrastructure bond for people to buy into at minimal rates of you know, about 1,000 naira. Tunde Andrews is joining us, but... He still has more answers, so let's hear it all. Then we'll uh, take an overview of everything he said. The sector itself has already been, been, been uh, unbundled. And I say this because 
Uh, and I thank you for the question because it provides an opportunity perhaps to reach out to more Nigerians to understand what has happened in that sector. When this National Assembly passed the 2005 Electric Power Sector Reform Act, it was a clear statement that the Nigerian people, through their elected representatives, were saying to government, get out of power. Let the private sector do it. That process led to, uh, and before that process, the Ministry of Power, they used to have over 50,000 staff as a ministry. And those were the men and women who manned all the power stations, they manned the transmission system, they manned the distribution companies that we now had, were off manned by officials of the ministry seconded to them and posted accordingly. By the time this law was implemented and privatization took effect, the staff strength of the Ministry of Power that I inherited was about 790. And in the last budget defense that I presented to uh, Senate, we were accounting for 699 staff. So the effect of that law was that the ministry had ceased to be an operator and by extension government. We didn't have trucks, we didn't have meters, we didn't have ladders, we didn't keep transformers anymore. That was now the business of private sector. By that law, the ministry was restricted to policy and directives. And the regulator was NERC, the Nigeria Electricity Regulatory Commission. So they issued licenses, they could sanction the, the, the licenses for non-performance. We seem to be having signals connecting there, but as soon as that uh, is back, we'll be right back there, of course, uh, bringing you that live coverage. Uh, so, the, I mean, looking at the faces of these lawmakers, they don't seem to understand Jack about what he's saying. And, I mean, he's mentioned so many things, including uh, Sukok, 10 trillion era infrastructure bond. And he said uh, the privatization uh, policy has helped, quote unquote, in reducing the number of people working in the Ministry of Power to 709. They now deal with policies and directives while NEC enforces. What do you make of his responses? <clears throat> Quite a few things. Um, I, will start with, um, I will start with the first thing where he talked about infrastructure uh, bonds. Yeah. There's nothing new he's saying there. There are so many bonds that, for that offer right mm -hmm. now. It's not even just the bonds. It's the it's the will is the will behind the bonds. People okay. are not as excited about bonds anymore because your the political will to push it through is not there. Okay. Do you understand? So, for instance, he's talking. He talked earlier about um, a community that they were having skirmishes with. It's the same thing that happened with the LCC Lekki Express mm. uh, access with That's the right. Aja market. Yeah. We realize, and it has happened over and over and over again, that government tends to pander to public uh, popular opinion when it gets to the nitty gritty of trying to uh, push out infrastructure so as, as uh, for instance the agile access access for instance they couldn't pass the agile itself because at some point they didn't want to move the agile market so yeah. it went back and forth back and forth which of course was why the lcc broke up and then lagos took it back it's the same thing with he's talking about with the um, lagos ibado expressway so infrastructure bonds can be created it is nothing new there's no magic in yeah. what he's trying to say right now the question is why haven't you done it right. you are the you, minister and you knew this for the past four exactly. years exactly this, this do you know the funny thing this was known before he even became governor yeah i i, I actually remember a, a infrastructure conference i was in before he became governor that this was spoken about extensively so it's not telling us anything so if new. he knew this before he was governor he's been governor he's been minister so why is he coming to lecture us is it, you know th this is the thing i don't like and you know this is the unfortunate thing about this seating where he is at mm. is because a lot of those people there might not totally understand this thing they look that like they don't so so it's he, he's getting away with with you know someone, as, as someone, they say the proverbial asked, murder someone, someone asked about infrastructure yeah person mentioned you know several um, federal roads especially uh, roads roads leading to ports mm -hmm. and he said that you know they've actually tried in that regard but one of the problems most of the problems they're faced with is 
funding and he's talking uh, about we're how we're saying the same <laughs> thing so, so we're he, saying he, the same he, thing he's now explaining that what what the nigerian needs to do now is to have a very large bond that the last to cook bond that was Sheriff. issued was oversubscribed that if we have like 10 trillion naira to cook Sheriff. bond for instance Sheriff. that can be broken down to oh the God. barest minimum of maybe a thousand naira subscription that people Sheriff will oversubscribe now, and we can have stop. this is not <laughs> no, a I'm, new I'm just, idea i'm just regurgitating what he's saying but this is not a new idea but the, the point is is it a valid idea no it's not just valid it's been happening for years we even have a green bond in mm. nigeria that was instituted by the former minister of environment before she went to the uh, united nation a green bond that was focused on creating renewable energy sources in nigeria we have all sorts of bonds the capital I, and, market and I, and is I know too that. mature i know for that. this thing that he's saying yeah, he, he's, i know that what he's saying is a bond as large as 10 trillion and that's so the focus. what is so nothing new question now is, so, so why, why haven't we done it that's Ask the question him. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Ask and I'm wondering why no one has interrupted. Let's ask hear if anyone has interrupted to ask him what are you saying. <laughs> and that's a business model that I think we need to look for. For Lagos, Ibado, and to PPPs, uh, all of us are living witnesses to the fact that when the PPP was signed uh, for that project in 2006 or 2007, nothing really happened on that day until 2012 when the previous administration cancelled it. So that's the kind of delays you can have. So there was five years of no activity, really, of visible activity. When it was cancelled, then it became a court case. And the same is true of the second Niger Bridge. By the time I took office, the people who were supposed to be the concessionaires said they couldn't continue. That they All right, so he's still explaining. Uh, he's talking about roads and why concessionaires have not finished the road. Second Niger Bridge, of course, the Lagos about Expressway has been there forever. So, do you, w- what breaks my heart? I mean, listening to this is we seem to like going in cycles. I mean, we keep we talking about lot. the same things. Yeah. You know, you, know, you know what really hurts me is that we knew this four years ago we knew this six years exactly. ago we knew this eight years ago there's nothing he's telling us that is new that is so new. for instance th- there's this thing he said about and he, he, he put this out on twitter one, one time and it, it seemed to be uh, a, you know a good argument you know he was talking about the staff strength of of the ministry mm. you know the staff strength went from something thousand to, to 700 and you know yes there is a reason why it went from that to that because you used to be phcn yeah mm-hmm. You had PHCN under you. And you're not that you are anymore. No longer p- and you don't have to be. Even 709 you is get. a lot for what you do. Exactly. <laughs> I you, think it's a lot. You don't have to have <laughs> those numbers. Have. You don't You're not the one managing me. No, you're not. You're not the one managing polls. You you're just make policy. You just make policy. And direct so what it. is the What are we even doing with it? 709 people so, making? So, <laughs> and, and you know, the, the story is that when he says this, everybody's like, oh, no wow, wonder. Wow, wow. So because good. those, those and since you have Lagos, I need to explain this. Those people did not disappear. They just moved from under the workforce of the government mm. to the workforce of the Jenkos and, and Discos. Yeah. They still exist right. working at some point. Right. Well, we have more questions coming for Baba uh, today, Fashola. He's the first uh, nominee and, and being the, squinty the, today. The Senate leader said he has about 28 senators. Who want to ask him <laughs> questions. So, <laughs> so just keep your fingers crossed. Let's listen to the next set of questions coming up for him right now from uh, Senator Emmanuel Bacha. And I know the only project from Federal Ministry of Works, a road project is the one that I brought as a constituency project. But even then, money allocated for the, ro- for the road had been diverted. Is there one road that you are doing in Taraba that is not known to me? Thank you. Senator Comrade Patrick Abomoro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the privilege to ask these few questions. Uh, Mr. Nomini, you were Minister in the Ministry of Works, Power, Housing. And some concerns 
have been voiced in recent times concerning infrastructural deficits across Nigeria. As a former minister, immediate past minister, in charge of these facilities, are you happy and satisfied? In one, the permanent state of ongoing projects like the Abuja Lokoja Road, the local Oweto Bridge and Road, and the second Niger Bridge to mention very few. Secondly, can you, in all honesty, tell Nigerians now what you are going to do different, if perchance you are confirmed and posted to the same ministry to stabilize light, to enable Nigeria to celebrate at least one, two, three, four, five months of uninterrupted electricity, just like other countries have recently celebrated 50 years of uninterrupted electricity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator I.D. Gyan. Thank you, Mr. President. Sitting as chair, committee of the whole. As a minister nominee, I want to say that uh, to congratulate you and to say that one thing that is conditioned president for the long awaited developmental and economic breakthrough of our nation at the national and subnational level has to do with infrastructure and in particular roads and power and the nation entrusted you with that responsibility for the past four years and the president has again seen the need to reappoint you should you be reassigned to that same ministry your attention would be brought to the critical artery of the road linking Akwanga, Jos, and Bauchi to the northeast. That is a critical national artery. And also, the one linking Jos and Zaria is very, very important. Secondly, in the housing aspect, would you subscribe to this? very strong opinion that the issue of the displacement of people that have been affected by violence and banditry that has to do with their resettlement should be incorporated into the housing policy in a way that provision will be made for the rebuilding of those communities as part of the process of healing uh, the processes of the communities that have been affected and traumatized by this violence. Thank you. Senator Yusuf Yusuf. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, distinguished colleagues. Um, I want to congratulate the nominee uh, for coming for the second time. <laughs> But my question, sir, I am from Mambila, Taraba State, and Senator representing Taraba Central. I have two questions, sir. One question is, you said the international challenge for delaying the, Mambila, the progress of Mambila is actually the processing or the slow processing of the Chinese loan. Now, what is the local challenge? Because what is the local challenge that is delaying 
the Mambila Electricity Project. I know it was awarded in November, no, in, in, in August 2017, contract signed in November 2017, and today is about two years down the line, and my people are agitated. What is happening to the progress of this project? That's question number one. Number two, sir. Uh, Taraba Central is the only senatorial district in Nigeria which is not connected to national grid. What is it that is delaying the hooking of Mambila uh, of uh, Taraba Central to the national grid? Thank you very much. Senator Rocha Sokorocha. Distinguished colleagues, I have 14 names. So if we can be generous enough to ask only a question per person, so that everyone can go around. Well, there are 40 people, 40 senators, who want to ask Babatunde Fashola questions. Uh, <laughs> that's a lot. That's, that's quite that's a lot. That's quite a lot. A and I'm wondering why. What's going on? Did you, you understand why this so be? 40 senators want to ask him questions well well it's it's generally around his purview you know minister of power works and infrastructure yeah that's so about three ministries, ministries together one. to which of course the biggest of all of them is it, it's a, it's an opportunity for all of them to shine and um shine indeed and, and particularly a slightly relevant state is that fashola also holds a slightly what they would assume to be a, an arrogant demeanor. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, that's because he speaks a lot of English. But yeah. you see, you know, Which they it, hardly understand. Yeah, so in, 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 in those circles where people speak English, you know that there's a lot, there's a lot you can say without saying anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. But mm -hmm. they, don't, they might not entirely get that. So yeah. they see it as arrogant, him showing. And they want to show know, him yeah, that he can also so, talk yeah, back. So that, that is a bit of it. Yeah. So Rocha Zokorocha is asking his question right now. I would head back uh, to hear that question and the responses coming his way. 40 uh, senators will be grilling about the Fashola this morning. We just had about four or five of them. So we have about 35 to go. Goodness gracious. It's a live coverage of the ministerial screening on 99.3 Nigeria Info. We're live on Facebook, on YouTube. Also, you can watch what's going on in the studio. Tunji Andrews is with us. That's an arrogant stance uh, Tunji was talking about. He's... I mean, he's got the feel like, bring it on, bring it on. Yeah, I got you I, guys. I can take you, guys. I can take you on. And I, and I have a feeling that's exactly <laughs> the reason why most of them are saying, yeah, we'll bring it. Because yeah, it, yeah, the, the we'll Senate president it. said there were 28 well, you people. Don't, you don't need to bring 28 questions. Exactly. Just gather some, gather of, us, some <laughs> of us here. We're just asking you. Just, just three. No, let's make that yeah, three, three questions. Three questions. Three questions. It's to be done. You're good to go. <laughs> done. Over. All right, Nigeria. We're still here. It's a live coverage. Stay here. This is the live coverage of the Ministerial Screening, Ministerial screening. on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Issue of power, power in Nigeria. Yes. How much is required? And issue of discourse. Would you say discourse is a, a, a success story or was it a political roundabout? Thank you. Wow. 
سنتا صدیق سلیمان عمر Mr. President, sitting as chair of the Committee of the Whole, my distinguished colleagues, I am Sadiq Sulaiman Umar, representing the good people of Kwara Nath. Mr. Nominee, congratulations for your nomination. I have a very simple question, and this has to do with regulation. Regulation. Regulation of goods and services. <clears throat> Mr. Nominee, the regulation in any country determines how anybody, the citizens, and in fact other country takes a country serious. In Nigeria, what is your opinion as regards what is responsible for suboptimal performance for our regulatory agencies and the regulatory professional bodies. And again, what will you say we need to do to put them in the right path so that, you know, we can put behind us all this building collapse, poor, substandard, adulterated drugs, name it, all these problems. What will you say? What do we need to do? Because this, the activities of regulators is directly proportional to how citizens take a government serious, how they be committed to the country, and how indeed other countries will take us serious. Thank you. Deputy Chief Whip. Thank you, Mr. President, sitting as chair. I'm Dr. Aliu Sabi Abdullahi. I represent the good people of Niger North and the Chura District and for Niger State. Permit me to align myself with other speakers in congratulating you for this second nomination. My question is, there is a submission that the present procurement system in Nigeria is serving as a clock to the wheel of progress in executing government you know, pro uh, projects or contracts. And it is also said that it does not favor our indigenous companies in the construction industry, and in particular, small and medium enterprises are not getting a good bargain because of the very many qualifications. What would be your take with respect to this? Secondly, I'm from Niger State, and Niger State has over 2,165 kilometers of federal roads. Which means if you are coming from the north to the south or vice versa, you are bound to encounter a road in Niger State. And because of the heavy traffic, currently I don't think Niger State has any 100 kilometers stretch of road that is very much removed. I know you've made so much effort, but if we are by chance taken back to this ministry, what will we be doing differently that the very good people of Niger will feel very happy that that story of the blind man who says we are in Niger simply because he has had the gallop of the road, he will say yes, we are now in Niger State because of the peculiar nature of Niger roads. What will you be saying differently so that our people will have that hope that the Biningwari Road to Tegina and to uh, Makera and the like will come back to life? Because these roads have been completely abandoned now. That is why the uh, Mokwa Bida Road coming through to Suleja is now the main road people take. That itself is also suffering from a lot of pressure. So what will you be doing differently so that we don't end up losing all the roads that will take us to our various constituencies. Thank you. Senator Francis Ali McKenna, then Senator Danjumo Goji. Mr. Nominee, <coughs> I have two questions for you. For the past four years now as a Minister of Works, 
what have you been doing about this Obiagana, Okene Road, Okene, Auchi, Auchi, Ekoma? And this road, money has been budgeted year in, year out, every year. And if you come back again as a minister on this road, what are we going to do about this road? Right now, the road is not possible, especially Okene to Auchi. They respond. They budget money on this road year in, year out. Then you talk about this second question on housing. Money was budgeted for the housing as well. Yeah, for the past four years, your ministry never commissioned any project, any housing project. I didn't see anyone. And if, if I have done anyone in any state, I have not done anyone in Edo, what are you going to do? What are put to this fund that will release to you for housing? The, the third one is not just an advice. Uh, no, 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 no. Just two. Just two. Just two. Just two. Just Thank you, Mr. President, the Chair. I am Mohammed Njimo Goje, representing Gombe Central. Your Excellency, Mr. Nomini, uh, right now, as you know, there are hundreds of roads littered across the country. Some have been there, have been ongoing, sometimes abandoned for two, three years, then work resumes. The work is abundant. To the extent that there are so many roads. Well, more questions coming in. This is coming in from Senator Danji Magoje. Okay. And he's also asking about roads. They all seem to be concerned about the roads it's leading all, to their about, constituencies. It's all about roads. I mean, the road to my state, the road to my constituency, the road to this, the road to that. Are those the only questions we're going to ask for the next one hour? I, I'm afraid, really. It does explain why um, Thashola was able to get away with this earlier Sukuk statement. Because he's going to give all those statements again. Again, exactly. You know, and he's mm. going to regurgitate and go round and round and round the circles. Because the truth about it is this, right? And, and you know, this was my response to a few people that were defending him. There was this extensive, robust defense of why he, his work at the Ministry of Power failed, you know. And there was this talk about, oh, it was doomed to fail from day one mm. and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, we knew this before you went in, mm -hmm. you know. So we expected that you going into that office, you knew what the expectations were. You knew what the, the, the deliverables were supposed to be. And you already had a inkling of how you were going to circumvent the issues. He had three strong ministries well power, one one, works, one of the housing. one of the ministries how he had said and it's one of this this ministries he had wow. said and it's on record that it takes just six months to fix well he said he did not say so he took it back well, oh he, yes he, said, he, said, he, he denied he took right. it back he denied he, he denied. took but it it's back on, it's on record now. well he, he, he took it back that. he uh -uh. said he never said so yeah yeah he, <laughs> well, it's only Nigeria. We have comments it. on Facebook and YouTube. We see you all. Some of you are arguing already <laughs> over the screening. Uh, so some say, please let him just have one ministry this time and not three. Critically, critically, look at these three ministries. How do you combine those three? And, and you know the thing yeah. about power, it, we have never been sufficient. Housing, we have never been sufficient. Oh God, what terrible! Yeah. So, 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 it's, so it's three, just like th three of them are down to three of them are down to policy. Uh, the reason why power is failing is down to policy. The laws around power. It's clear. The only reason why power is failing is policy. Why do I say policy? Mm. There are there is a sort of oligopoly around power in Nigeria, mm -hmm. and that oligo oligopoly is around the discos and the gencos where the system has broken up Nigeria into territories. So this is your territory. Exactly. That is your territory. Mm -hmm. This is your territory. Mm -hmm. That is your territory. And it makes it difficult for independent power projects, which are rising up around, to be able to, you know, adequately service their, mm -hmm. their providers. Because, of course, they can't also even use the grid. Mm -hmm. They can't create their own grids. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of a problem. So we have one national grid exactly, issue. Exactly. National grid issue. Now, and it's the law that 
instigates that is a policy issue That's right. now at the end of the day uh, there was a recent uh, fine given to one of the ipps in lagos here mm. that was servicing i think the um lekki ikoi link bridge and some parts in on the island and vi that oh you you are servicing and you didn't ask us for permission this is the territory of this per- particular place so you have to pay you, the money you've collected pay it to the disco mm. and without even supplying those people power so those are the issues we have with power well he's got some answers for us uh answer questions from the three powerful ministries combining to one that he handled in the past four years let's listen to babatunde fashola answer his questions I alluded here earlier sir to the powers of the regulator. Let me speak to two powers that the regulator has in, I think, sections 73, 74, and 75 of the Electric Power Sector Reform Act. On the complaint of a consumer or another licensee, and DISCOs, GENCOs, and TCN are licensees that any licensee is not carrying out his function properly. One of the powers that was vested by that law in the regulator net is to undertake an investigation and do one of several things, including amending the license of that licensee or even canceling the license. As we have seen in cases like the central bank and as we have seen in some cases with the ncc as we have seen with the nigerian broadcasting Co- commission so the powers of the regulator for ref- making the reform work must be targeted towards ensuring that minimum service levels licensing conditions are met and until we fully exhaust those powers it will be premature to say that the reform is not working. But oftentimes when we privatize things, who goes back to check the service level compliance? Who pulls a lever of caution or compulsion, as the case may be, for us? And and I think that is something all of us should uh, 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 spend some time to look at. The South African model, for example, with which we have sometimes spoken sadly in derogatory nature about our nation is not perfect it is indebted massively it continues to benefit from government funding now when the discourse for example government is a holder of 40 percent of the shares of discourse and it holds 40 percent on behalf of the federal government the states the local governments and the, 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 the labor unions. So as a shareholder, it must also invest. And I think that is my understanding of the Siemens intervention, which uh, was spoken about by one of your distinguished colleagues, and I'm, I want to take them together, just to say that at this time, uh, whatever investments is coming through Siemens will have to be worked into the existing arrangement. But I was not around when that agreement was concluded, so I can't speak here to the final details of what it contains because I have not yet read it. About commissioning roads, I'm happy uh, uh, Distinguished Senator Danjuma Goje brought this up in the open. These were discussions we have had privately because I approached him as chairman of appropriation committee and that if the decision were mine, and I've made this recommendation in the Federal Executive Council, that the decision were mine to make, as I once did when I was in Lagos, that there will be a year or two years where there will be no new projects. And if we can come to that as a nation, and this is the challenge of liberal democracy, really, how to build consensus amongst all of the eminent men and women who are representing various parts of the country with a mandate to bring home development. But if we can have consensus about this and say this year, let us have no new projects, Let us prioritize. We can't have everything we want at the same time. So if, for example, all of these distinguished senators from the southeast, three from each state, we make the Enugu Potako Road with the senators from Enugu, 18 of them, as their priority project. The uh, Kanu Maiduguri Road, 
crosses about seven states, you will have 21 or so senators saying, this is our commitment to all our people while we are here. And if we look at the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, serving three states, nine senators there, the Ajeba Andele or uh, Bini serves Ogun, uh, Ondo, Edo State, and so on and so forth. We can begin to have consensus about our priorities. We cannot do all of what we want at one. The life of a nation cannot be dealt with in more than four, in, in four years. It requires more than four. It's a, it's a going concern. So th those will be my broad recommendations that I am willing to take up at a more auspicious and time-permitting forum. But I think that they, they may provide a way forward. And I think, in, in a sense, I have answered what distinguished Senator Francis Ali McKenna alluded to. I'd like to provide some clarification. Some sections of that Bini or Kenya Aochi route have actually been finished. The section from Bini to uh, Azura and so on have been finished. The problematic section is the one that you mentioned. And the problem there is that there is currently no drain to take out water. It's a low water table area. So if we build as it currently is, the road will fail again. And so I have challenged our engineers, and we, they were working on a drainage solution with the contractor until I left office. So if we don't drain that place, it just will not happen. And what will we do differently? What we have done throughout rainy season and Christmas when there's heavy traffic and flooding is to at least make it moderable to ease the plight of, uh, of commuters. And I think that you will acknowledge that this has happened repeatedly. We want to find a final solution. Let me say again that uh, I, well, Niger State, uh, distinguished Senator Sabi Abdullah will agree that we have moved the needle a little bit. Uh, again, problem, of course, is how much money will we get? Because it is one thing to make the budget, and I think it is common knowledge here that no ministry has received all of the resources for its budget. So, yes, we gladly announced Ministry of Power, Works and Housing has 500 billion Naira budget, but we seldom get more than 250, 280 at peak. So, Nigeria is not yet the rich nation that I know that it will be. It isn't yet. So, there's a gap between our anticipated spending and what we really earn. Um, in terms of procurement, yes, I agree, and we have discussed this uh, severally. There are many issues with the procurement system. It seeks, I think, to, to uh, uh, achieve value for money. Uh, whether it has done that efficiently is debatable, but it also excludes some of the most vulnerable people in our society, small and medium uh, and very basic people, people who want to pay children's school fees who want to pay medical bills, people who want to pay their house rent. They want to benefit from the procurement. People you represent, that we represent, and they can't benefit because the conditions for benefiting are too onerous. So they have to bring all sorts of documents which they never have. So the cost of getting those documents becomes something that makes them unable to benefit. So we started a national maintenance infra infrastructure uh, infrastructure maintenance program. This is a process by which we uh, seek to engage a lot of artisans, plumbers, welders, uh, carpenters, uh, bricklayers, R&A, refrigeration, heating, ventilation, and cooling practitioners. But I am afraid that as the procurement law presently stands, it is only the big people who will make more money or who will get the contracts and then engage these people. So, and I have made the recommendations to many of the distinguished senators, and I hope that we will see a, a, a rescoping of that law. The, the expectation that have been expressed here also for projects to be completed on time are not compatible. Our expectation of speed is not compatible with what we have enacted in our law, where we have to first do a procurement plan, where you finish that, it gets approved, then you advertise it for six weeks, then there are thousands of bids. Then we get human rights, civil society to come and witness everything. Then after that, then there are petitions and so on and so on. It is not compatible with the speed at which we want to move. So our law is holding us back. And 
The law is made for us. We are not made for the law. And I hope that distinguished senators will rise up to this challenge and look at this as a matter of expedition. Let me... Time up, time up, Mr. President. Speak to regulation, because it is raised by distinguished senator Omar. It's a very important point, and you will have heard me at some public fora speaking about the need to recruit some of the very best of our human capital into our public service. I am developing a paper that I hope to share. All right, the senators are interrupting uh, Mabatunde Fashola already, and he has raised quite some important points uh, in his responses. Uh, he has talked about budget and, of course, uh, allocation of monies. It's not enough to just budget some amount of money for those ministries. He said sometimes we have 500 billion naira for the three ministries, but at peak, there's a release of 280 billion naira. Which, of course, is, is a big challenge. It's a big, it is, it is a big, big challenge. Big challenge. Mm. He's also talk about the process, you know, of getting these bids and all. He's still speaking. I, I guess they're allowing him to continue his responses, but he needs to wrap up quickly. Let's hear a bit more of what he's saying. Also, will have experience wise in EMU. And therefore, we need to find more money. My recommendation is for, was to suggest we raise an infrastructure bond where all Nigerians can contribute their small, small token. And let's see how far that takes us. Uh, we also are utilizing PPPs, but again, something like the tax credit initiative, people have not understood it sufficiently, and maybe I should say a word about it. An advanced credit of the company's income tax to government, an advanced credit of its income tax, and therefore, for a company to benefit, so if you want to do a 10 billion naira road with your income tax paid in advance, it means first that you must make profit of an amount that equivalents or have a record of up to 10 billion. How many of our companies even turn over 10 billion before we begin to tax them? So that, that is a problem with that. But it has shown some appetite by some of the, the big players and the, the room for clearly exists. Um, the question about what is holding Mambila, that's a very important question. Mambila has been in the front burner. I think that this administration can take credit for having been the one that finally issues a binding contract. There was never a binding contract on Mambila. All of the contracts, one thing was wrong. They didn't pass through FEC. It was somebody, there were court cases. This was the first time an EPC, Engineering Procurement and Construction Contract, was issued. Now, having issued that contract, as I said, there is funding issue by the Chinese uh, government, but there are also issues about now demarcating the precise area to coordinate, and we have employed surveyors to do that. FEC approved that memo, working with the Taraba State Government to start that. We were awaiting their report when I left. That would then lead us to, after defining the territory, for example, if we wanted to build in this Senate, it may well be that the footprint of the project may not get to your seat. And so we have to enumerate all of the senators whose seats will be affected and who will be paid compensation and draw a boundary. And from there, of course, some advanced work is going on backstage that people will not see. But uh, some progress has been made. There was a question about Taraba Central. I think from you, I'm not sure which part is Taraba Central now. Is it, Wuka, I will come to it, sir. Uh, is it close to Wukari Takum area? Bali. Bali. Okay, I'm not quite sure because I was going to bring your attention to the Kashimbila project, which we had neared completion of the transmission line now. And I think once that is uh, commissioned, it is possible to extend its width to uh, some parts of Taraba Central. The EB Bridge, I think, and I have to be careful here, I know that it has cleared procurement. I am not sure, and I don't, I don't want to say, I can't recollect very clearly now, but I think, I think that we awarded it in the Federal Executive Council. Um, um, then... Um, 
Well, the policy about displacing people and housing, I think is a, is a very important and compassionate point. But I will support a policy along those lines. But let us remember that the federal government is not the one in control of land, and you can't build houses without land. It is the state governors and the state governments who control land. The models we have started with have actually proceeded on the basis of asking states to give us land as pilot projects. Um, Well, they seem to have had enough of the answers, and the senators are already, I mean, yelling, bow and go. Just, mm. it's, it's okay, it's okay. You've, you've done enough, bow and go. Well, he has raised very critical points, uh, Tunji. He has raised very critical issues, uh, including funding for the ministry. He has also mentioned, uh, you know, the procurement p process, uh, even when these monies are released. Mm. And he says some of our laws inhibits. Uh, speedy <laughs> completion of projects and is thrown a task through the lawmakers to, uh, you know, uh, change those laws That's that right. might be inhibiting those projects. Mm. Well, Mimo, um, he was former governor of Lagos State. That's right. While in his tenure in Lagos State, Lagos State created an IPP project, Independent Power Project, and I think they were create. They made, um, I think, a hundred megawatts or something. I can't remember what it was. Mm. But then they then found out after they created the IPP that the laws inhibit them from distributing it within Lagos. So he had to, most of the, uh, the IPP basically got shut down and, you know, it's, it's gone comatose uh, ever since then. Um, so he's not, he's not l just learning about these laws. Mm. He knew those laws eight years ago, right? Second, funding. He didn't just know about this. He knew it eight years ago. But could could he have done anything about the funding? Really, I mean, it's and uh, even the law. Yeah, it's yes. it's so much. It's, it's, if it's the government like so, so he, he, he doesn't release really the money. Here's the minister, thing, guys. Here's right? the thing, guys. Here's the thing, guys. So his job, as he said, is regulation policy. Yeah. Right. He has four hundred. I mean, seven hundred and something people. Seven hundred and nine. Seven hundred and nine people. Hmm. Yeah, around him working policy. His job, beginning to end, should have been in this house lobbying to get laws passed right, mm. right laws that will favor because he there was nothing else he was doing mm. all we heard was he was clearing stuff from a papa wolf like he was um a, a clearing a forwarding agent mm. the idea is that he should have been here fixing the laws making sure that lobbying to change exactly these the laws, change that the stopping laws that you. stop it so him coming here to say oh it was the laws that didn't have i i knew the laws were the issues from mm. day one mm. but the thing also is that we have you know committees in the house in charge of these ministries yes. what were they doing does it mean there was well, no synergy here's the, here's the all thing. through here's the past the four years here's the thing right so we i don't we're not excusing the lawmakers that didn't do their, their yeah. duties but he so they say who to whom much is given much is expected and mm -hmm. you expect a lot more from a, a, a fashion who a, as i said started an independent power project in lagos that because of this said laws could not work mm. So then you then become minister. The immediate thing that comes to your mind is, as I'm entering office, mm. the first thing we need to do is, how do we fix this law? So, so that I can be fixed. Here, here exactly. Here, here is what I heard when I had this conversation some time back. I think it's about two or three years back. And the the person told me that the issue of, Ni the issue of power in Nigeria is more political than even exactly. any anything so at all. So then we come back to the issue of political will. So so look at Lagos, who happened to be able to muscle all its resources to generate power. Mm -hmm. Most most states cannot do that, mm -hmm. and that's more that's the more reason why we have one grid. Because some some states will have power and resources mm -hmm. to pull, you know, to pull this thing off, mm -hmm. like having independent power project. While yeah. some states will not can never do it, be able yeah. to do that mm. in the next 50, 100 years because of whatever. So so it's it's more political. So even if he had done anything, if he had lobbied, if he had No, he moved, could have lobbied. You see, at the end of the day... Maybe uh, nothing at, at, significant at the, of, at the end of the day, could have happened. If he had lobbied, and I'm, I'm not saying lobby alone on the, at the back. Yeah. Lobby both at front, back, Let center, people hear everywhere. you. If he had lobbied, mm. this discussion, these questions wouldn't have come up. He would be able to most tell them yes, that he, he would have been saying, most but I have always been post. here telling you that this exactly. was what yes. we needed exactly. to do. Yes. So, do you see the difference yeah, now? Yeah, that's it. So it would have been clear from day one that it wasn't 
his issue. But he mm. went there with the, I'm going to do it all. Then he said going around in circles, going around in circles. Then after four years, he then realizes, oh, the laws are not going to allow me yeah. to do anything. What are we kidding here? Well, let's uh, take a very short break, bring you the news we're monitoring on the hour. Uh, it doesn't look like Baba Tade Fashola will be <laughs> let off the hook anytime <laughs> soon. Hands are up. People still have questions to ask. If One is standing <laughs> and <Alrighty>. guess <laughs> who is standing. Guess who's I standing to it, ask I the next it, question. It, it, <laughs> Senator <laughs> Elisha Abo, the same one who was in the news uh, recently for assaulting a, a, a woman. Hmm. He's the one standing right now to ask his question. Uh, on the floor of the house. Uh, let's take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll tell you the stories we're looking at on the hour, and then we'll be back going back to the Senate for more. More talk, news, and sports after this.
top. He was never he was never short of answers. Yeah. He kept giving them all the answers and I like the question that Senator Abu asked and I pretty much even like the answers much more from uh, Raji Fashala because he says something like, Look, when when it when a city or a country is at war, it, it gives a lot of pressure, especially on the people there. That the reason why, you know, areas that Senator Abu mentioned the roads there, the infrastructure there were dilapidated is because they couldn't work there because security issue. The contractors said they cannot mobilize the site and that, because genuine. of, and they had to go back to go and c- call on the army corps engineer and to come and work there. And the army said, as a matter of fact, they had to destroy that place in order to curb insurgents from having easy access to the main town. Mm. So, I mean, that's that's a genuine thing to, to raise. Mm. I like that the question was asked and the answer was given. Well, let's head back to the Senate right now. You're watching a live stream of the coverage uh, right now of the ministerial screening going on live mm. at uh, the National Assembly in Abuja. And my name is Wemimo Adewuni. And I'm Sheriff Kodru. We are back on Facebook and YouTube. You can join those platforms if you like to watch on your mobile wherever you are currently. Let's head over to Abuja and listen to the next nominee standing up right now to answer questions, making his opening statement. Uh, after that, we'll be back with uh, work hard to get in touch with our correspondent, Fidel Tagali, who is right there at the National Assembly. As soon as he can speak with us, he would come step aside and tell us, uh, give us a brief of what's going on there. It's day four of the ministerial screening and let's head back to the Senate. I was sent there as caretaker committee. When we went there, the party was in total disarray, but with the help of God Almighty and the elders and stakeholders of Kano State, we were able to put the party together. And to, up to the merger, it was one Kano State at the time, one CPC. Uh, at the merger, we joined with all the members that we came from APP, ANPP. In 2015, uh, GMB at the time appointed me as a member of the strategy committee. And later, he also approved my appointment as deputy director of field operations in the presidential campaign council. And in 2016, I became the chairman of the Buhari Support Organization, BSO, which is the lead organization of all the support organizations. Uh, in 2017-16, again, I was appointed as Chairman Universal Basic Education Commission. In 2019, presidential campaign, again, Mr. President appointed me Director of Buhari Support Groups in the Presidential Campaign Council. And also, Her Excellency, the First Lady, appointed me as Director of Operations in the Women and Youth Presidential Campaign Team. Your Excellency, my current place of work is the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC, a commission that I'm very passionate about, Your Excellency and which we should all be, because that is the Basic Education Commission. And that is the building blocks of any educational endeavor here in Nigeria, because if we don't get the basic education right, it will be difficult to get anything else right. I remember one time we were having a meeting with some Koreans from South Korea, and we asked them, how did you make it? from a country ravaged by war and poverty to now a technological giant. And what they said was, they consciously sat and planned to tackle the sector of basic education. Because once you get that right, everything else will fall right. The single Senate president, at the UBEC, we have a slogan that says, Education for all is the responsibility of all. And so, it's all our responsibility to make sure our basic education sector is given the adequate attention 
it needs. Mr. President has already done his, because in the last counterpart funding, what he did was he directly permitted the state counterpart funding to UBE. Because at certain times, Your Excellency, we do face challenges with some of the state accessing their counterpart funds. And without funds, of course, it will be difficult to address the issues of basic education. And this basic education is free and compulsory, and there's even provision in the Act that parents can be anything from reprimand to fine to even jail term because it's a must that your child must have this nine years of basic education. That's primary one to six and junior secondary one to three. Thank you, distinguished Senate President. Distinguished colleagues, I, I want to just remind us of something. The, the, the nominee from Kaduna has already made his remarks, and we have his CV. And from his remarks, and of course, his CV, we all know that this is an accomplished person, an experienced person, the kind of product that we all need to have in our Federal Executive Council has some legislative background that will hopefully also help us create and sustain the much desired executive legislature harmony and cordiality. And I wonder if there is any question that anybody would like to ask. So I will call the minority leader. I will call the minority leader. I will call the minority leader to make his presentation. Speak on behalf of the Senate, please. I've looked at his beard. minority leader, how he relates, or how he had been relating with the majority party in Kaduna State when he was minority leader. But I won't say that, because you have tied our hands. And so, the when you speak, Okay, right there, we just lost signal. Shortly, we will get it back. Uh, Muhammad Mahmoud from Kaduna State, right there. Funny enough, I mean, if you just do a random Google of the name, mm -hmm. there's nothing. Don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely nothing on him online. But he's been a, a member of the House of uh, Representatives, uh, State House of Assembly, rather, mm. in Kaduna State in the past, and he was a minority leader. So the minority leader of the Senate right now is asking him how he coped mm -hmm. when he was a minority leader. And he started by saying that I've seen his DNA. <laughs> and I'm wondering, <laughs> are we doing forensic? <laughs> okay, we're back. Uh, uh, Inaya Baribe is still speaking right now, addressing him. He might just be asked to take a bow and leave, mm -hmm. but let's see how this plays out. I've been told to speak for the Senate. This Senate had already established some temporary because we say we are going to revisit this that anybody who so, Mr. Nominee we congratulate you and we ask you when you get to the 
We sincerely apologize for that break back and forth in the signal. Please do bear with us, especially for those watching online. Uh, we're live on Facebook and also on YouTube, Nigeria Info FM. And Rin, the minority leader said something very critical here. Did you did you get that? I hope you did not miss it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said the um, this in-house rule of anyone who's been in the you know house of reps or who's been a lawmaker being told to take a bow is temporary quote unquote i guess they've heard the outcry from nigerians and from the media uh about asking people to take a bow without really asking them any questions that's right that's right but for now i mean there isn't much to be said uh for mohammed mahmoud from mm. Cardin- uh, Cardinal State. for some reason i'm expecting a very robust screening today uh maybe because of the pace set by uh uh raji fashola as uh, um, screening earlier on uh, who spent over an hour being grilled by the senate but this particular uh, nominee who is uh, still in front of these senators hasn't said anything really and i've not um, really heard any questions so far and I'm, I'm sensing that he might just be asked to take a bow and leave well that might just be what would happen uh, the majority leader is also speaking after that of course uh, I can predict where this is going. I can see a uh, take a bow and leave mm. coming up here. But let's see if anything's about to change. It's going to be an asset to this administration. That with the quality that is before us, really we conferred with you, Mr. President, to try to allow Kaduna State to showcase a candidate of such quality. But our hands were tied by the earlier agreement that we have reached. Thank you very much that people with legislative background be allowed to go out for now. now. Later, maybe we are likely going to revise this particular uh, concession that we have given so that we can be able to have a knowledge to learn you know, from such people of immense capacity. So with that presentation and with what the minority leader has said, I will Please with my colleagues to allow the candidate to bow and leave the chamber. So I so beg, Mr. President. Thank you very much, uh, uh, the Senate leader and the minority leader. Well, there you have it. As expected, he's told to take a bow and go. Uh, I, I believe the earlier, you know, rule was for those who have been uh, in the Senate or the House of Reps mm-hmm. and not for the state assemblies. Uh, but now they're saying any lawmaker at all in whatever capacity will just be told to take a bow and leave. But they're emphasizing now on it being temporary. That's right. And that maybe later, I'm guessing when that later would be, they will change that rule. It might just turn out to be selective. I mean, if you want to make a rule generic, make it generic. If you're not going to adopt that kind of, you know, rule, don't don't adopt it at all. Don't say temporary or permanent. Just say that, you know, for the sake of people, for the sake of the fact that these people are going to be paid with the taxpayers' money, then they need to answer to the people. You need to. I mean, it's your job to ask them, you know, uh, good questions, some direct, important, point blank questions that will show that, yes, they know what they're there for. And um, I can see that he has actually taken his bow and he's on his way out with his entourage. Yeah, I mean, and the house looks pretty scanty. Can mm-hmm. you see that? Looks quite scanty. It's not easy Does with what they did on Friday. I beg your pardon? Yeah. So they had Saturday and Sunday to rest. I'm, and I'm sure that they are not resting. I'm sure they didn't rest. I'm, I'm almost certain that they didn't rest. On Saturday and Sunday. And they were working throughout Beca- the weekend. Because, because, you know, that Friday took the whole of, your, of their time. And the that's why they time. won't report for work today. Uh, no the, excuse, really, because they are being paid with I that mean, money. I the, mean, the place looks pretty scanty. Uh, I mean, I'm not impressed with the number of senators I, I am not. Uh, seated today. I am not, really. This is not impressive. But well, well, let's uh, take some minutes to hear from you. Are you following this live screening? Uh, uh, Mahmoud has been told to take a bow. Uh, mm. Mohammed Mahmoud from Kaduna State. Uh, before the next nominee comes in, let's take some calls from you. I will give you the phone numbers right now. You can reach us. Tell us uh, if you've been following, which of these uh, screenings have impressed you so far, uh, and uh, what are you looking forward to? Here are the numbers to join us now. 
Call us on 012770993, and 0127723993. This is Nigeria Info. We are listening. It's Nigeria Info. We are listening. Can we take some calls right now? We have Absolutely. Victor from Aja. Victor, good morning. Good morning, Wimo. Good morning. Oh, good afternoon. Good take afternoon. that back. We never good get afternoon. used to the afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. so, this screening they are doing, I don't even see any, any improvement in the, in, 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 in the ministers. Okay. Because you see, so you see some people I have been there in the past four years. Yeah, it is the same people now. So I, I don't see any change in the in the next level because it's still the same people. Look mm. at the uh, Lai Mohammed, look at Amechi, uh, look at all of them in Gigi. So mm. so what is the next level we are we are planning to do? So I don't see any changes in in this their screening. Thank you. Mm. Okay, and uh, let's see who else is on the line. Do we have somebody else? Yes, Peter we do. is calling us from Mikoro. Hello, Peter. Peter. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, the fact means that uh, this uh, you said you have a scanty uh, presence of the senators at the chamber. Yes, it's expected because the one they did on Friday or last week. Mm. What that was? What is the achievement? What are they there for? They are not allowed to talk. They are not allowed to ask questions. Mm. So what is their purpose there? Mm. You understand? This mm. are the reason. But, but you, you no think, bad, you no think bad, that no, is why they won't show up today? That, that is the reason. Mm. Because they are, their presence does not really matter. It does not change anything. Okay. Mm. okay. The, their decision is predetermined. Mm. That wow. is the fact. Wow. Then secondly, yes. about the uh, Fashola Gili yes. and some of, uh, some of the ministers. Mm. Mm-hmm. I want to state here that uh, Buhari... Mohamed Buhari, who is our president, the commander in chief of Nigerian forces, is the driver. Why all the ministers are passengers? They have little or no contribution. Mm. Wow. The body language and the direction of the government come from the, uh, from the uh, Buhari. Mm. You can imagine in 1984. I'm, 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 so, I'm let's sorry. Not, I'm let's sorry. Not we, take, yeah, let's not I'm take sorry. A trip down memory lane. Yeah, I'm sorry. We have to wrap it up. Don't let us go there. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we have the next that. nominee standing by. Thank you so much for calling. Thank, thank you, Peter. Uh, Gwemsola Saraki from Kwara State is standing on the podium right now. Uh, Gwemsola Rukaya Saraki is a Nigerian senator who was elected to represent the Kwara Central Senatorial District on the platform of the PDP in 2003. Mm. Uh, she was elected into the House of Reps in 1999, representing Asa Ilori West Federal Constituency of Kwara State. So she, on two counts, she would be asked to take a bow and leave. She's been a lawmaker and she's also a female nominee. That's right. They seem to also have a house rule to not ask any questions from female nominees. Mm. I totally do not agree with that, but mm. that's what it is. And she'll be the 34th nominee to be well, to appear before the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> because you said that she would just take a bow Presentation and leave. So. Is a <laughs> to appear. Let's just leave it at appearing before the Senate. Well, she she looks ready to take them on. I mean, she could, she's smiling at them all. Some of them her former colleagues. Some of them, I'm sure, they've been in touch over the years. Mm. And well, uh, the Senate President is addressing the House. She would also take her opening remarks shortly. I expect some accolades here and there yeah. and take a bow and go. But let's head back to the Senate. We'll take your course again in a moment. Senator Mohamed Bello, uh, Senator Aouba Karagada, I recognize, I recognize Obani Koro before now. Aouba Karagada, I say so. And of course, members of the House, our so have accompanied the nominee. The, the nominee, we already have copies of your CV circulated to us. And uh, you can highlight anything in the CV that you think needs to be particularly noted by the Senate for this screening exercise. And of course, speak to anything that you might have omitted from the CV, but would be of consequence for the screening. Once again, on behalf of all my colleagues here, you are welcome to the Senate chamber, and you can speak to the Senate. 
Um, the Senate President, the Deputy Senate President, the Majority Leaders of the Senate, the Minority Leaders of the Senate, Distinguished Senators, and can I recognize, uh, especially the three Senators from Quara, starting with my own Senator, Senator Ibrahim Muluregbe from Quara Central, and the, uh, sen the Senator from Quara North, Senator Sadiq Umar, and last but not least, the sen Senator from South, Senator Lola Ashiru. Good morning, distinguished senators. My name is Bemisola Rukayat Saraki. I am from Ilorin, Kwara State. Uh, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to have been nominated by Mr. President to uh, be a member of his cabinet and indeed an honor and privilege to be standing here before you. Um, I want to also take this opportunity to thank the Senate President for highlighting my little experience thus far um, within the legislative arm of government. Um, I, I don't think there's anything else I need to add unless of course there's something else you need to, you want to know. But I know the majority of you here I know personally and I am honestly extremely pleased to be here. Thank you. Senator Dino. You know, she has two things going for her. Well, let me mention the two I know. <laughs> First, she has that legislative background that we have given concession for. Second, she is one of our Amazons, a female nominee, and this chamber is very, very gender sensitive. We believe that Mr. President has made the right nominations for all our women or female nominees. Great ladies, very brilliant, and I will stop at that. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> <laughs> you, you abandon me. I'm not sure about that. It's not part of a criteria. But I think she's eminently qualified to take the bow and leave. But before she does that, let me wish you all the best. Thank you. But also urge you on behalf of my colleagues that this Senate and indeed the National Assembly is desirous. In fact, we are primed to work with the executive for the sake of our country. Those of you, I think seven of you who have legislative experience and will be there in the federal cabinet, you have the unenviable job and task of ensuring that the relationship is built and is kept in the national interest. We had unpleasant experience in the past of members, former members of the National Assembly who didn't do well to create the kind of relationship that is necessary for smooth, cordial uh, relationship for service delivery to Nigerians. So we urge you to help with that. You will be our ambassadors in that arm of government. Yes. I'm sure you are going to do a great job. Thank you. You are a goal getter. Thank you. And of course, with other people in the Federal Executive Council, Nigeria will be taken to the next level. Thank you. Is it the wish of this Senate that the nominee from Quara takes a bow and go? Yes. Those in favor say aye. Those again say nay, you can take a bow. And there you go. When Mr. Lassaraki has been asked to take a bow and go, uh, oh, wow. she knows what to do. Uh, I mean, her bow is neat and clean. <laughs>
<laughs> it's neat and clean, neat and clean. She's taking the bow, I mean, and off she goes. Uh, she's a nominee from Quara State. She's been a member uh, of the legislature. And she's also a woman. I mean, on those two counts, mm -hmm. she definitely will be told to take a bow and go. Oh, well. Um, at least we're moving on. We're moving forward, even though I'm not in support of taking a bow and go. Nah, nah. Uh, I also Whether you're a woman or a man. Exactly. No. Exactly, because um, whether you whether we want to accept this or not, these people actually have must have accomplished one or two things in their lifetime, in their life, as a matter of fact. Yeah. So let them we come forward and it. tell us what they have done. Mm. It's something, no matter how little, it's something because we want to give them these responsibilities of taking care of a whole ministry that will affect millions and millions of lives in this country. So you don't just allow such people to just come take a bow and leave without well, telling us what they've accomplished what they've done what they are doing or what they plan or to what do. they plan on doing but that's what's going on right now and uh, the senate might be taking a break at one o'clock uh, during which would join uh, colin stecker right back here in lagos mm. on the lunchtime magazine colin stecker is standing by so lovers of lunchtime magazine just hang around uh, surely uh, the house will take a break soon I mean, they're already laughing and shaking hands. Uh, and they might, if the routine is the same for today, they might reconvene at four and have another long stretch till late uh, evening or night today. Hmm. But uh, Bim Salasaraki has taken the bow. That's right. Uh, we're waiting to see if uh, the announcement for the break will be made now or if the next nominee will be called up. Whatever it is that they must have uh, in plan, I know that it's going to be a long day for the senator. Uh, right. For the senators, absolutely. But their counterpart from the House of Reps, they've since gone on their own recess um, after forming their own uh, over 100 committees uh, by the uh, uh, the Speaker of the House, Mbwajabe Amira. They're on their own recess. And I also learned that some of them haven't left the National Assembly because they kind of like, they found it quite um, important for them to be here to show support for some of the nominees and also to see the witness pr proceedings you know for themselves well there's a call being made by the majority leader i'm um, believing it might be uh, a call for a break but let's listen to it I so move, Mr. President. thank you mr chair But before doing that, uh, I'm sorry I omitted that I move that the chair move for, to plenary to report progress. I move. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I support the motion that the chair now moves to plenary and report progress. Those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it. All right, a progress report uh, will be given by the Speaker uh, of the House right now to tell us how far they've gone and what will be the next thing to do. Mm. Uh, they've moved to plenary. Uh, they were sitting as, as a committee, uh, but now as he, and he was a chair. Now That's he's right. moved to his seat in capacity as a Speaker mm. uh, of the Senate to give... As a uh, President of the Senate. President... <laughs> 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 the president of the Senate, and now he is giving his progress report. Mm. <laughs> Distinguished colleagues, the Senate in the committee of the call considered the request of Mr. President CNC for the confirmation of nominees for appointments as ministers of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The nominees answered questions from the Sungu senators on a number of topical issues. The nominees screened are Babatunde Raji Fashola from Lagos. Dr. Mohamed Mahmoud from Kaduna State and Senator Bemishola Rukayet Saraki from Kwara State. As ministers of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, is this a true reflection of what transpired in the committee of the hall? Leader of the Senate. Mr. President, sitting in the chair, uh, given the regulations and the decisions taken by the Senate to suspend proceedings around one o'clock for one hour break. I rise to move that the Senate so suspend its proceedings and reconvene 
at two o'clock from. I so move. Minority leader. Mr. President, I support the motion that the as ably moved by the majority leader. Distinguished colleagues, before I put the question, we, we need to come back at exactly two because we still have six nominees to screen today. So if we are able to come back at two, uh, we stand a chance of finishing uh, the list. For this. There you have it. The House uh, is moving to go on break right now and return at 2. That's right. Uh, what this means is that we are wrapping up the first half of the live screening, uh, live coverage rather, of the screening of the ministers, uh, the ministerial nominees mm. uh, by the Senate. They've risen to go on, on a one-hour break. That's right. Uh, so from now till 2 o'clock, Colin Stecker and the crew will take you on Lunchtime Magazine. Mm -hmm. And when it's 2 o'clock, uh, you'll be listening to Sandra and Agogo who take you on the next line, the next relay race uh, of the live coverage of the ministerial screening. So they will be here in the studio to take you through those live coverage from 2 till they finish. I'm not, I'm not that's sure. Until, that's it. From two <laughs> until further notice. <laughs> until further notice. Until further notice. So Sandra and I will be in the studio to take you through those uh, the proceedings at the Senate at the live um, screening of the uh, ministerial nominees. That's right. Mm. Uh, let's tell you the stories we're looking at on the hour. The Senate has resumed the ministerial screening with Babatunde Fashola as the first nominee to be screened. The presidency says the proscription of Islamic movements of Nigeria had nothing to do with banning the larger numbers mm. of peaceful and law-abiding Shia to the country from practicing their religion. An anti-corruption advocacy group, Socioeconomic Right and Accountability Project, SERAP, has urged state governors to emulate Governor Sheyi Makinde of Oyo, who declared his assets publicly. Former Chief Medical Director, Central Hospital Bini City, Dr. Philip Oduadaga, says over 80% of people living with hepatitis lack access to prevention, testing and treatment services. President Muhammad Buhari has approved the establishment of a national action committee for implementation of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. A United States congressional delegation led by Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, is visiting Ghana. And an ambitious campaign by, uh, to plant 200 million seedlings in a day is currently underway in Ethiopia. Nigerian author Timamanda Adichie has featured in Meghan Markle's forces of change list for British Vogue cover. And lastly, Liverpool manager Jürgen Klopp has described the club's training camp in Evian as the most important week of the season. We're following these stories on the hour. Let's join Colin Steck and the Lunchtime Magazine. Thank you all for being a part of it. Big thanks to Tosi Akimide, Yvonne Hokaifo and uh, uh, Zainab Yakin for assisting us. We'll see you again tomorrow morning, guys. I'm Wemimo Adewuni. And I'm Sheriff Quadri. This is the live coverage. Daryl screening. Daryl screening. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. Keeping up with political.